Hi everyone, welcome to this new video. Today we are going to build a multiplayer to-do list application with live blocks and vanilla JavaScript. You can find this tutorial on our website. You will find every instruction that you need to follow along. I will put all the links that you need in the description. So I've just created an empty project and I will init npm on the folder and then we'll install the required packages. We'll need two packages, LiveBlocks client and ESBuild. The first one will be able to connect to the LiveBlocks APIs and the second one will be required to build our app. As we don't use any framework here, we don't have any build tools. So ESBuild will be able to transpile the JavaScript files and generate a bundle so we can use every latest JavaScript features. Now we have to open the package.json file and add a new script. The script will be named build and it will call esbuild passing the app.js file double dash bundle and double dash out file parameter. Don't forget to pass the save parameter when installing the packages to ensure that the esbuild package is added to the package.json. Next, we will create a new file named app.js. This file will contain our application. We will have to import the create client function from the liveblocks client package. The next step will be to create a client using the create client function from the liveblocks package. This client allows us to connect our application to the LiveBlocks APIs. We'll have to pass a public API key to authenticate all our calls to the API. Open the LiveBlocks dashboard and go to the API keys page. Here you can reveal your public key. You can also switch between environment on the bottom left of the page. Let's copy the key here and then we are ready to use LiveBlocks. Let's create a new function called run. This function will run our application. So we'll begin by creating a room using the client.onter method. The onter room method is the older version of LiveBlock, so if you use the latest version, the correct name will be client.onter, and you'll have to pass the room ID to the function. Don't worry, I'll fix that later. Next thing will be to create the index.html file. This file will contain our application and will be the root file for the application. Don't forget to use the ID and the classes that we've put on the tutorial. It will help you to uh, improve the design of your to-do list. The next thing will be to display all the other users connected to the application. For that, we'll get the who is here element from the document. Once we retrieve the element from the DOM, we'll use the room variable to subscribe to uh, the room updates. Passing uh, others as the first parameters allows us to retrieve the presence data from other people connected to the same room. After that, we'll update our, the inner HTML of our element. We'll put the value and interpolate the others count in a span. Here we replace the enter room call by client.enter and everything should work well. As you can see the application is working, we will open a second tab to test if we can retrieve others presence. And here we are, one other user online. Open the tutorial on the website, you will find the link in the description and copy the index.css file, which contains all the style sheets that you need to style your application. Let's rerun the build command and then, as you can see, the styles are applied on our application. Don't forget to call the index.css file in the index.html. Now let's go back in the index.html file and create a new input. This input will allow us to create new to-dos. Pass an ID and a placeholder. 
the ID will be used to retrieve the input element from the DOM in the code. Okay, so let's go back on the app.js file and get the input element from the DOM. Use the document get element by ID function to retrieve the DOM element. Then we'll create a new event listener on the input. To do input dot add event listener and we'll use the key down event, which means every time you type something in the input will update the value of the presence. For that we'll need to check that we are entering the enter key or not. When the key enter is uh, pressed, we'll update the uh, to do value and push the value in the live bug storage. We'll see that later. In the meantime, we'll set the is typing property in the presence to false. By calling room.updatePresence, you can pass an override uh, object and this object is completely up to you. You can define every value that you need. It can be an is typing flag or it can be the position of a cursor. Uh, we don't uh, apply a specific rule there. It's just an object that will be updated every time you call the update presence method. We'll also need to use the blur event on the to-do input to put the is typing value to false in the presence data. Which means every time you get out of the input, you will have to uh, set the is typing to false. So this is how we implement the someone is typing message when uh, other people are typing in the room uh, on the to-do app. After that, we'll go back in the index.html file to create a new div that will handle the someone is typing message. The last step will be to create a new uh, variable which will contain the someone is typing document element and we will update the value in the room.subscribe function. So if someone is typing, the inner HTML value will be the uh, message or we will erase the value if needed. In this example, we are using the others variable extracted from the subscribe call and uh, this variable contains uh, all the other users. So we map the value to an array and then we detect with the sum um, function of the array if there is someone that is typing. If it is the case, we'll display the message. If not, we display nothing. Let me refresh the application and then we'll test our new feature. As you can see, when I'm typing in the other window, the other one is displaying the someone is typing message. So everything is working great and it is working in real time. Next step will be to save all the to-dos. For that, we'll need the live list object. So I'll import it from the live blocks variant. The live list object provides a conflict-free list data structure that you can use to synchronize data uh, between clients. In order to use the live list, we'll have to extract the root variable from the room dot get storage after that we'll create the to do's and the value will be retrieved from the root object which means we try to get the to do's values from the storage so if the to do's values is equal to null we'll initialize the to do's values using the to do's equal new live list and then we'll set the value of to do's. After that we'll push the value of uh, the to do's input when the enter key is uh, pressed. So we go back to the key down event listener and call the to do's that push 
passing a new object with the to do's text. With that code, we can save the to do's. Now that we are able to push the to do's values in uh, the live block storage, we'll create a new container and display the to do in our application. So let's get the DOM element into a new variable called to do's container. After that, we'll create a new function render to do's. The function's goal will be to create all the elements that we need to display our to do's list, which means uh, in the inner HTML, we will be able to append a new child. So let's go fast forward for this one because it's pretty long and it doesn't add up any value from what we have been doing here. The final code should be like this. We create a loop to iterate over every to-dos. We use the to-dos.get function to get the to-do value. After that, we create a container for every to-do. We add the text, the CSS classes, and every element that we need to display properly our to-dos list. Don't forget to append the child to uh, the to-dos container to display properly all the elements that we need and we are done. The to-do list should be displayed. The last thing will be to call the renders to-do function to make the first render. After that, we'll have to call the subscribe method on the room object, which means we do the first render and every time something is changing in the to-dos list, we will re-render all the to-dos. And voila, everything should work well. So as you can see, I'm creating a new to-do and the other tab is updated in real time. We only miss one thing here, the delete button, so let's implement it. So in order to do so, we'll go back in the render method and create a delete button element. The element will be a button. We'll just have to implement the onClick event, which will be able to delete uh, the selected to do before passing the element to uh, the container with the append child method. So we'll use the same type of code here, the delete button add event listener on the click event. And we'll pass a callback function. The function will call the delete method on the todos uh, variable. Remember that the todos variable is a live list object. So here we pass the index to select the specific to do to delete, and then we append the child. So let's refresh the application, and then we have our delete button. As you can see, it is working properly and it is working in real time, thanks to the Livebox API. So let's create a new to-do, code a multiplayer to-do list, application, and as you can see, it is working great. And voila! If you want to see all the data that you've recorded on the Lifeblocks storage API, you can go on the Lifeblocks dashboard and open the room page. Here you will be able also to delete all the storage for a specific room. I hope you liked this video, feel free to give a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!